Lately, I've been using Tombow watercolor markers, and I just wanted to share what I have learned from using them. I'm going to go over some watercolor techniques, color and stamped cards, and just some different blending techniques you can use with the markers. Now, the markers come in 107 different colors. They're dual tipped. You have this nice brush tip for calligraphy or coloring. It's really a nice tip has a very fine point on it, but it is soft enough to do calligraphy and hand lettering. Then you have the bullet tip, which is great for mono lettering, also great for outlining and coloring and different things as well. So it's a dual tip. Now when you put the caps on, make sure you hear that little click or they might dry out and you do not want them to dry out on you. Now these Tombow markers are very versatile. You can use them for hand lettering, calligraphy, design, illustration, watercolor techniques, coloring books, and journaling. Just um, That's just a few of the things. And I'm going to go over all different kind of techniques. This is my coloring page. This is my journal. I just wanted to show you some examples. This is a stamped card that I did. Some watercolor technique. And also you can use it for hand lettering. Now I'm not a hand letterer, so I'm not going to show you any of that. But just be aware that you can do wonderful hand lettering. So the first way I'm going to show you to blend, we're going to go over blending first, is marker to marker. Now you want to start out with your lightest marker and then come in with your darkest to blend those together. Now I've got the darker pink on top and I've got the, or to the left maybe, and I've got the darker one to the right. And once I get those laid beside each other, I'm just going to take that lighter marker again and blend the two together. See how nice that blends so softly and so smoothly. So that is one way you can blend them marker to marker and start off with your lightest marker. I'm just going to go one more layer into the dark just so that you can see the difference because these are pretty close in tonal value. But there you go. Those are two markers blended together marker to marker. Now you can also use a colorless blender and you can buy colorless blenders sold separately. You can also buy these um, markers individually or in packs and the packs are usually sorted by color but you can get the colorless blender by itself as well. So I went with a yellow, a really bright yellow green, and then I'm gonna go in with a darker green, and I'm just coloring those side by side, and then I'm gonna use my colorless blender to blend those. Um, just be careful if you're not using really good paper, then your paper can start to peel with all of this blending. Um, I like to use watercolor paper. This is just my sketchbook. So I just wanted to caution you, like if you're doing this in a journal, it can peel your paper, you know, cause it to have just the layers to peel up and get really rough. So just be cautious of that. Use a really light touch, work fast, and that will help keep your paper from peeling. And you see that colorless blender is just blending these colors right together. I am going to come back in add a little, I didn't have enough of this yellowish green in here, so I'm just going to put a little bit more. I couldn't blend it all the way out like I wanted to, so now I'm just going to use the blender and blend that into that yellow, that really bright yellow up there. So that is another way that you can blend your markers. These are really nice, these are really nice markers, and they last for a while. So now I'm going to show you how to do it with a traditional watercolor brush, a traditional watercolor method is what I'm calling it. Maybe not traditional since we're using the watercolor markers, but I'm going to do the same three colors. I'm just coloring them onto this shape, and then I'm going to take a damp, not a wet, but a damp watercolor brush and blend all of those colors together and see how beautifully that works. These can work just like watercolors, so I really like the effect. If you want to practice this yourself, I've got some practice sheets. I've got two different uh, coloring pages. One you can print directly onto watercolor paper or one you can trace over. And I also have a list of tips. Now the next blending technique we're going to go into is with a water brush. It's very similar to using the traditional uh, watercolor brush. You know, a water brush is just one of those brushes that is filled with water and you can squeeze it and the water will come out the tip. They've become popular in the last couple years. So all you do is just like a regular watercolor brush. I got a little drip there. Let me dab that up. You just take the tip. It's wet from the water inside of it and you just blend it. It also makes beautiful effects just like the watercolor. 
the traditional watercolor brush. So I thought you would enjoy seeing that as well because I know some people don't have watercolor brushes, but they have markers. The next way you can do it is you can actually blend these colors on an acrylic block or a piece of plastic. I have an acrylic block that I stamp that I use to stamp with and I'm just putting the colors directly onto the block and then I'm going to use a traditional watercolor brush to blend them on the block and then paint them onto the paper. This method you can blend almost an infinite almost an infinite amount of colors with it because you can put any color down on your block and then blend them together before you ever put them on the paper and it's much like using the block as a palette with like you would do with a traditional watercolor. So this is another method. I'm just trying to show you the methods that I've been learning about, the ones that I've been practicing, just in case you need to know. Don't forget, I have that pack for you. It's going to be linked down below where you can get the um, practice sheets and you can get the tips and you can get your bonus coloring sheet. Now here I'm going to blend all of these colors together, sort of like a gradient. So I'm taking yellow. I want this to look like a nice fall leaf. So I've got my yellow. I'm going to put that in. I'm just going to color that in there. Maybe some orange or some burnt orange. Whatever colors that seem to speak fall to you. Just put those in for practice. Or any colors really. You don't have to use fall colors. You can use any colors that you'd like. You just randomly color those in. And then you're just going to blend those together. And it comes out really pretty as well. And it gives you sort of a gradient. That's using really different colors. Um, and I'm just taking my water brush, since it's handy, and just blend it out. Or you could use the traditional watercolor brush, like I said at the beginning. It's fine, whatever you have. You could also use your color colorless uh, blender as well. I mean, just whatever you method you want to blend it, whatever you want to use. And it comes out really beautifully. And you get a nice gradated, warm tone in this beautiful fall leaf but again you can use any colors this works with any colors it's just i chose a fall leaf because i just wanted to do one next you can layer these colors now what you want to do is you'll lay down your lightest color make sure you start with your lightest color because a light color may not cover a dark color you'll lay down your lightest color you will let that color dry completely it's almost like traditional watercolor when you're glazing and that's basically what we're doing we are glazing these colors over each other so i'm laying down that first really light yellow color and then i'm going to come back and glaze over it with some different darker colors probably greens now this is dried through the magic of a video that has dried completely and here we are. You can see how I've just glazed over with different colors onto that leaf and I'm going to show you a better, a better way so that you can really see how it works. So now I've got yellow and I'm going and it dried and I'm going over it with blue and the result is green. So that's what I mean by layering the colors. The colors, if you layer certain colors, you can get new colors or you can get darker tones. Now I'm using the wet technique where you wet the paper first in watercolor. It's called wet on wet. I do not like this technique, but I thought I would show it to you. The reason I don't like it is the water gets sucked up into the paint nib at the end of your, or the marker nib at the end, and it makes your color very dilute and very pale. And sometimes the marker will stop coloring actually you'll have to let it sit for a little while for all that ink to come back into it so i really don't like this method you can see the one flower petal that i did how much paler it is than the other petals and that was the one that i wet first i don't really like this you can test it out if you want to some people like it but i just wanted to show it to you i i don't really like it but i just wanted to show you that that is one thing that you can do you can wet your paper first and do a wet on wet the result is you're going to get a really dilute and pale color from your marker and it may even uh, cause your marker to not color for a little while. You'll have to let your marker get, get the ink to come back down into that nib. Now once that's dry, or it's not dry yet, it's still a little wet, I'm going to add some darker shades. You can do your darker shading. You can add textures to this. There's all different things you can do. Once it's dry, you can add some line shading with your markers. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that in this. In this, this little sort of a pansy looking flower. 
So I'm just taking my brush, blending the edges. Now that brush is damp. It is not wet. Um, my paper would not be able to hold up to some really wet washes. So I'm making sure that I'm keeping my brush damp. So be mindful of what kind of paper you're working on. I'm going to go ahead and add some more shadows with a darker purple and just sort of blend that out a little bit with my damp brush. You know, I started off showing you one technique and I'm just going all the way into this little flower with shading and everything. And then you can, like I said, add details at the end. I've got a really dark marker. I'm going to add some line shading. Now, this is kind of messy, but I just wanted to give you the idea. This is not going to be a masterpiece hanging in anybody's house by no means. But it's okay because you get the idea of what you can do. And then I put a little yellow in there just for some contrast and pop because I can't stop messing with it because you know how I am. I'm one of those people that got to mess with everything until I kill it. I just keep beating the dead horse. So now I'm adding a little bit of pinks in there, some line work. Just, just really gives it some texture. Now, you know, this is just to give you some idea of how it would look so that you can go off and explore on your own. Remember, it's more about the process. It's not about the finished thing. So those are some techniques, some really easy techniques. That's a color to color, marker to marker, colorless blender. We have the traditional watercolor brush that's just damp. We have the water brush that's filled with water using the acrylic block as a mixer, just mooking, putting all kinds of colors and blending them with water and then using water first and then also the layering and glazing. So those are just some techniques. I want to show you another technique. We're going to try to do some northern lights. I've got a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just going to lay down some colors here that I think would look good with northern lights. So I'm going with yellow, sort of a green, um, maybe some purple or blue, and just put that as the sky and I'm just going directly onto the paper. Again, this is 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. Be careful not to tear your uh, to pin nibs up with this because it's rough and it could fray them so be really gentle when you're working on rough paper I suggest using smooth paper if you can like a hot pressed paper so I'm just putting a little bit of a darker edge on here this doesn't have to be perfect I'm just trying to show you a technique that I would like for you to try that I think you would enjoy I'm getting a little fussy with it because I want some of that up there to be a little darker I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue just however you want to do it just is this up to you and I don't care about the bottom because we're going to come back and paint over that bottom so now I'm just taking my spray bottle and spraying that directly onto the paper and see how it just starts to mix and mingle and look so pretty and it gives you a really nice spontaneous background so now you're going to let that dry completely. Once it's dry, we're, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my little galaxy. Not galaxy, northern lights. That's what we're doing, people. Come on, stay with the program. So now it's dry. I have painted the actual forest scene on there. Not really painted. I used markers to do that, and now I'm just using a little bit of white to put in the stars of that beautiful northern light sky. In another video, I will show you how to do this. But in this video, I just wanted to show you the technique. And the main technique is to color all the colors down that you want, wet it with a spray bottle, let it mix, let it dry, and then you can come over and either paint over it, stamp over it, or use your markers over it like I did. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to download your free guide and your free coloring pages. That's a bonus. One you can print directly onto watercolor paper and one you can trace. Thank you for watching and share this with a friend you think might get something out of it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Share it. Sub up. Do all the YouTube things and I will see you again soon. And I hope this has really helped you. Don't forget the link below to download your free tips and coloring guide.